Like many cities, Montreal has some weird shops. And I've often wondered, is this related to the history of uh, Montreal's real estate being cheap? Or is it more of a history of organized crime, if you know what I mean? Now when I say weird, I don't mean like odd. I mean, there's lots of shops that exist that have some sort of a niche. It totally makes sense that Montreal would have a francophone only record shop or that the village would have a wig shop. But the sort of shop I'm talking about is the stuff that seems like it's not really a viable business. So I set out to visit these places and tried to figure out what they are and how they make ends meet. When I visited each of these places, I was struck by how unaware the people were about their shop being weird. You kind of get a, what do you mean, blah, blah, <laughs> you know? This isn't meant as an offense. I'm getting kind of pre-defensive here. But to me, weird isn't bad. I like weird. There's a store that's probably my favorite on the list called Replica. And I used to walk past it all the time and didn't really realize what it is. But it's basically a uh, teddy bear hospital. I can kind of see why this business would work. In a town of 4 million people, there's enough kids or people who want to restore toys that Montreal could sustain a store like this. Now it's unbelievably cute. They have these little uh, hospital beds and they kind of have a little chart on the end. It's amazing. I happen to have a patient for the store. It's my childhood bear. His name is Goldie and I asked my mum and dad to send him over. Goldie arrived in this uh, paper box. Let's open him up. Hey! Oh my god. Ah, uh, here's Goldie. So Goldie, I love how angry he looks. This is, uh, this is my bear. So um, you can see here Goldie has uh, experienced some wear and tear here. He's got a He's got a very, very moldy smell to him, and uh, you know, you can see his back, his little spine is sticking out here, and uh, you know, there's a bit of, you know, there's a, there's a bit of wear through on his fur. Um, I always remember when I was a kid, I would look underneath his, uh, underneath his leg, and you'd see kind of like, this is, this is your original Goldie here, nice and long, and then this is your love to death. And it looks like we have a hitchhiker bear, who I do not know what this is. It might be my brother's bear. It'd be weird though, he has a girl bear. It's very progressive of my parents. And this bear has uh, attached to it a, a permanently affixed additional bear. Then we also have uh, a <laughs> Goldie, a Goldie um, suitcase. And inside of this, it should be Goldie clothes, you know, that lets you dress Goldie up. Wow, he looks like a pervert, but now he's got little pants, little pants on there. And I remember this particular costume was kind of um, inspired by Last of the Summer Wine. I seem to remember that I liked that when I was a kid and wanted... <laughs> like so. Oh, okay. Like so. Um, that's adorable. Last of the Summer Wine, Goldie. Oh. Sophisticated artist, Goldie. Ah, here it is. This is hanging out in the house, Goldie. Ah, oh, summer, summertime pants. What I'm thinking would be kind of cool is I'll take uh, Goldie along. See if we can get him fixed up. See if we can get his, you know, maybe his mouth can get stitched on again a little bit better. Um, one of my favorite things with Goldie, and I'm gonna to have to insist, is that they don't fix his fucked up crooked nose. Like it's been it's been crooked his entire life. And I think his like fierce red eyes and like just this like look of hate is a characteristic of Goldie that I don't want to see change. So Maison Aspireta is a vacuum cleaner shop. It's not just one, it's actually three. It's false. My favorite thing about this business is the logo. I mean, can you imagine the tortured life of this elephant living this Flintstones animal existence? <laughs> Even in this age of online sales, I went along and it was super busy. There were loads of people in there. So why does it exist? Traditionally, vacuum cleaners were a really big household purchase. 
And obviously a lot of people nowadays are gonna be going to your Walmarts or buying the stuff online. There are these really high-end industrial vacuum cleaners and there's central vacuum cleaners and they need to be maintained and replaced. There's also a lot of people like janitors that want something that is robust and repairable. A Dyson is fine for your house, but what if it needs to be used for two hours a day and constantly thrown in and out of a vehicle? That's where these guys would come in, supplying kind of high-end industry tools, not your average family vacuum cleaner. Walensky's Light Lunch also had hats for sale, but I resisted buying one because my budget had ran out. They sell a bologna sandwich with a pickle. It's actually a really good pickle that uh, costs a super reasonable amount. Um, it arrives immediately from under the counter, so you go in and you're like, I'll have a special, and then it's like up, which uh, is a kind of a funny example of the labor illusion being needed. A bologna sandwich appears from beneath a counter. You're like, wait, don't you need to prep it or something? If you linger around for too long, the lady will kind of give you this, you know, time to go look. I would say it's kind of like the working class version of Swartz's. So the reason that Walensky's is weird is it's actually a relic of the past. It's a business that managed to exist through keeping its costs low and with family labor, and I assume that they own the building. So they kind of don't need to make that much money to continue to exist. These lunch counter joints, like Walensky's, used to be really common. They were everywhere. I think it's interesting when I first heard lunch counter, I flipped through a kind of Rolodex of memories and remembered them being the site for a lot of tension with like African-American patrons in the deep south not being allowed to eat at uh, lunch counters or lunch bars. This was the way that a lot of people used to eat the lunch. You get a quick bite, you eat at the counter, wolf it down, get back to the plant. So it's interesting that they're fixed in our memory as being kind of a civil rights thing. You know, it'd be kind of like if people stopped taking the bus and buses were remembered as, oh yeah, buses, that Rosa Parks thing, <laughs> you know. This is basically the last remaining light lunch or lunch bar uh, restaurant that I can think of in town. The crowd inside has transitioned across from being the workers of the mills that used to be in Mile End to amuse tourists who appreciate the trip through time and uh, hipsters. Beautiful! Who were the people that introduced me to the place. And I gotta say, for the price and ease, it's actually a pretty great light lunch. Despite it not sounding very healthy, I think it's actually a pretty low number of calories and it gives you something to get you through the afternoon, but it's not like a full meal and um, it's actually a pretty good product. I'd highly recommend checking this place out. It's quite surreal and I think that this is something that won't be around in its current form in a decade. I think that you're either going to see it close down or more likely someone's going to come along and decide to remarket it and cash in on its uh, reputation as being something unique and interesting. Get there before it becomes a tourist trap. So Helium Balloon Ink, it just makes me laugh because the ink makes it sound like it's this kind of giant in the industry, but it does just sell uh, helium balloons. Obviously people have birthday parties, they need to buy helium balloons and Instagrammers have got to get those giant numbers somewhere. I think what's largely responsible for its existence is it's actually kind of hard to buy helium online on Amazon and stuff. So it's a bit like uh, wedding cakes. So it's not something that's been internationalized. It's still something that we're probably always going to have to get locally to some degree. I'm busy working on this cake. What do I got to babysit? I do wonder with the uh, helium shortage going on, what's going to happen to uh, helium balloon ink. I guess maybe they could <laughs> become hydrogen balloon ink. Yeah, I don't know if you'd want that near all the uh, birthday candles. Lampadis. 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 These nuts. Yep, you heard me right. This was my most likely mafia shop guess. It's pretty close to my house and I'd walk past it. You'd look through the window and you'd just see what looked like grandma lamps with huge sticker prices attached to it and it often seemed to be closed. But then I noticed uh, online that it actually had a bunch of reviews from people and so I had to go along and check it out. I'd say that it's similar to Walensky's in that it's one of the last of its kind in town. A lamp maker, Lampier in French I think, used to be a fairly common occupation in the world. Lamps traditionally, like oil lamps, were kind of a specialized trade and when electricity arrived Lighting was kind of the first appliance that existed. And this is one of the few that survived that transition across from being uh, a common occupation to being more of like an artisanal lamp maker. So he makes lamps for movie sets like chandeliers and that sort of thing. 
and he converts all sorts of household objects across to lamps. The lamps are really expensive, but I have to say the older that I get, the more I'm kind of like tired of buying shitty things that break. Enjoy your affordable Swedish crap. And would rather just have something that I really, really loved that lasted my whole life. So I'm getting that kind of way with furniture and stuff. Well, if I was a person who used lamps, then I would definitely be going there to buy a lamp. But uh, if you're a person who like reads in bed, why not own a lamp for the rest of your life that you love instead of just having kind of the plastic from Ikea. La La Connerie is a uh, shop that exists to sell uh, unicorn related products. Why this exists? Well, I think it's an example of a uh, long horsey tail. It's not open all the time. It's actually only open four days a week, I think. And it's a non ground floor retail location. So I assume that the rent's pretty cheap. This may just be a product of uh, you got a city that's the size. There's enough people that like unicorns. It's the only place that sells unicorn stuff. <laughs> Someone told me that they had an outlet in Laval and I was like, what? But I don't think that it's true. You know, two unicorn shops? Impossible. There's two businesses that are kind of in the same category. There's the Ulysses Travel Bookstore and Au Cap Point Gardenon, like a map shop. The travel bookstore, again, like a vacuum cleaner shop, has several outlets. So why these places exist, I honestly don't really know. There wasn't anyone in these stores when I went along. Uh, you can buy like GPS maps and stuff at uh, Au Cap Point Cardinal, but I mean even that is an increasingly rare thing to do. I can see Au Cap Point Cardinal holding on as like a specialty place where you can buy like globes and artisanal maps that are like made from wood and all that sort of thing. But uh, I have to say uh, Ulysses, I don't know if that's a viable business anymore. I think like Baby Boomer is buying their uh, copies of Lonely Planet is a increasingly small uh, market. So I, I can't see it working long term. The deal with many of these businesses is they're actually the last of their kind. So they're kind of like a saddle makers. These businesses are no longer massive industries, but there's still enough people riding horses to have a couple of saddle makers in each province who do that full time for a living. And from what I can tell, many of these businesses are doing just fine, and a lot of them I think have potential for growth as people look for meaningful and artisanal objects that they can own. It's really cool seeing people doing unusual jobs and it made me think you know there are a lot of jobs out there that you may not think uh, are options but they actually still are you know there's people that are fixing toys making lamps grilling a slice of bologna it made me think huh i think there's a lot of people i know who would be much happier if they weren't doing something normal and were doing that weird thing which they really really like so subscribe if you'd like to see the refurbished goldie when he gets back and uh, let me know if you know of any weird shops the shops that i know are kind of based around where I live. I'm sure there's a lot of places out there that I've never seen that I need to check out. Maybe there's even a place in the valley.